Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to walk through a new custom node called Comfy UI Mochi Edit. By default, this custom node were built for video to video editing objects or the whole video style from the reference source video, but I use it for video refinement base on the AI video that generated from Mochi AI model. It will be very easy to understand for people who have experience in Animate Diff previously. It's the similar concept. So let's jump right in. It isn't officially released with the model weights by the Genmo AI Mochi 1. It's purely using custom nodes for video editing in Comfy UI. For example, here we have unsampling nodes. And by using that, we're retrieving video frames from the original reference videos and using unsampling methods to regenerate better videos or using text prompts through the conditioning to resample it. Using another group of nodes here called Mochi Resampler, it's based on whatever text prompts you have and does video editing on the frames that you input from the unsampler. These customs nodes pretty much like what we have in animative sampling and unsampler which were able to maintain almost consistent styles and also the form and shape of every object from the reference videos. It passes through the resampler for further editing using text prompts or in the future maybe we'll have image to video for Mochi 1 AI models and we'll be able to use images to do reference editing for our videos. So here as you can see we have a few custom nodes and we're able to bring that in here. This is a workflow that I just developed on the weekend and we've tested the Mochi 1 video generations using text to video. All these custom nodes are available to download and play around with in the Mochi wrapper, which you've seen in the last video where I talked about Mochi 1 for Comfy UI. And this is the Mochi wrapper for running the AI video generations. Right now, it's currently supporting text to video for this model weights. Please keep in mind, Mochi 1 Preview is not support image to video by the model weights yet. For current video to video or image to video method in Comfy UI, it is just using encoding and decoding for video frames manipulation. Download all the model files in this link, place them into the subfolder, and you'll be able to run this. Remember to install any add-on libraries and components through the requirements.txt files, and you're ready to go and play around with that. I won't go through the details of installation right now because I did that in the previous video. You can check it out there. So this video will focus more on what happens after you generate an AI video. For example, here I have a woman at a cocktail party holding a cocktail and she's trying to smile. But sometimes in local AI videos, as you guys will have experience lots of times using the first sampler in the text to video examples, we go through the sampling steps 30 and then pass that to the Mochi decode. You basically sometimes, or most of the time, get morphing and some deformations of objects. For example, like this face of the woman, it should be in the text prompts right here. I put that in a gorgeous night party, a very beautiful woman who dressed very gorgeous. And so all these text keywords transform into these objects. The video goes with what I mentioned in the text prompt. But as the AI video cannot always generate a good result for a good face or a good character, sometimes, like this case, it's a very good example. Although the first sampling from the text to video is a fail, it's not, you know, acceptable. You don't have a nose and a mouth. It looks like something from horror stories right now. But what if we want to use this video because of the objects and the structures of the camera panning? I want to reuse this and we can go to another group which is the unsampling and resampling. So for the unsampling, as I just mentioned, the Mochi Edit Comfy UI custom nodes that are working together with the Mochi Wrapper Comfy UI custom nodes can modify any video to video and also resample the video frames to another form or shape or even just use the same text prompt, in my case, to enhance the video's quality. So here, as you can see, I have mentioned the unsampling part of the Mochi Edit Comfy UI custom nodes. This way, we're able to use Mochi Unsampler and use the Flip Sigma and also the Mochi Prepared Sigma. So basically, in the middle of this column, you see all this Sigma thing is just prepared for bringing your image frames into an unsampling method of generating the result in this sample's data. And once you have the sample's data, which means the latent noise of these video frames, each basically image frame, and pass that to sampling nodes to resample it again from the latent noise and pass that to the sampler, resample it again. And, you know, just like how you take down a building and then restructure it in a new way or restructure an old building into a new building. So that is basically the concept of what these Mochi added custom nodes were built to use for video to video. If you want to play with the very simple concept this way, 
which you see from these examples where it's showing the man talking and then using a text prompt to manipulate the output of other video to video results, you're able to bring it to cartoon styles or a man wearing a hat or the man character transformed into an old woman. And then other examples like this one, you're able to transform a parrot to a little flying dragon. And even the backgrounds of the output video results are able to transform into other shapes and totally look different in the background as well. So bringing this concept is like what we used to do in animated video to video. But then I found out that we can, you know, just use this in a simple way to make the text to video from Mochi One and make it better. Instead of having a morphing face, you have, you know, a blur face with no mouth and nose, and we're able to bring it to the second generation of these workflows. The video here you see looks totally different. Even the lighting of the overall video frames is able to enhance those lights. And you see the character's face is clearly shown right here. And also some other backgrounds are blurred away. It looks like the camera focused only on the character right now, but then in the back, the other characters or objects here, as you can see from the first sampling video, we don't even see any complete form of character objects. But then in the second sampling, you see it's getting better. You see another red dressed woman and then the other two guys in suits talking at a party and something like that kind of motion happening. So this will be getting, you know, better for enhancement for the AI video, especially for local AI video models generating on your consumer PC. Lots of times it will happen. Even in COG Video X, there's lots of times you'll generate some deformed AI videos and you're able to use unsampling and resampling methods to fix those issues. And this is how I did that with this video. And then lastly, I tried to use an upscaler, just upscaling a little bit with 1.5 rescaling, not too large. So just trying to see how the quality is from 480p resolution to almost 720p resolution. Even this upscaler I did, 1.5 upscale, is not going to be like HD or 4K resolution, but just trying to see how that looks like in almost 720p resolution for this output video. And it looks okay. Doesn't have much deformation or any weird stuff going on, except there's a blurry guy in here that we cannot refine that face. But it's okay because the background is kind of blurred away within that few seconds of video. Then that will be something that most people won't see that often obvious thing happening. So yeah, basically focusing on the face of this character, we're able to fix that. And also overall, the clothing and then the overall environment of this cocktail party animation are able to make it even better than the first generated AI video. And then if you want to upscale that, spend more time in Comfy UI, you can do that or you can bring it to another video upscaler software to do that as well. And this concept actually isn't new. Unsampling and resampling again, I have mentioned in Animate Diff before, to use for COG Video X in the previous tutorial talk about COG Video X. I have generated again the first sampling AI videos from the AI video models and then brought it to Animate Diff, unsampling and resampling as well. But here for Mochi One, which is more convenient because we have all sets of unsampling and resampling custom nodes built for one AI video model. Here is a more simplified way from my point of view that is easier to understand by going through the first sampling path and then going to unsampler, and then we're going to resample it again. But in the resampling, we have to be aware that first, the sampling steps here, numbers of steps, we will have to set a little bit higher in here instead of, usually we set 20 or 30 for the video generation sampling, which is in here, you see this 30, and for the resampling, we will set it to 50 by default, and also here from the GitHub page, it's also by default set to 50. The way of doing that is to give it more sampling steps to, you know, generate the high quality. Going into more details for each video frame for your second pass of resampling videos. So that's basically it. This is not too complex and pretty easy to run. And I have the control panel on the top, just easier to let you guys have one centralized place to do a text prompt and set numbers of seconds, and then something you can enable or disable in those groups that I have created. And you see this way, it looks very similar to Minimax. So the layout of that is pretty similar. Like this one, you have a big text box on the top, and then you've got a control button and upload an image, and do all the configurations on the bottom. And I'm just using that concept, maybe like a simplicity concept in here, a big text box for doing the text prompts and setting numbers of seconds, 
Not too many custom nodes connecting like previously in Animate Diff, where you see a lot of nodes after nodes and then groups after groups. And then I try to make it simpler right now rather than make it more complex because I know that lots of people are struggling with many complex workflows in ComfyUI. So at this stage right now, I'm trying to focus more on the features, try to make things simpler, easier to read, understand, etc. So here are some of the videos that I did using this workflow. And again, I have these basic features enabled for text to image, and you have the unsampling and resampling groups here. That is going to refine the AI video generated result. As you can see from left and right, obviously there's some little difference, but the AI model is still 480p resolution, so you cannot get high resolution, very clear pictures of everything from the generated result. If you want to have high res detailed AI videos, then you will have to bring the generated result to a video upscaler to refine that to higher resolutions. But then based on that, I updated something to optimize the loading in this workflow. So let's take a look at this text to image workflow first. This is a basic version, and I'm going to post this on the link in the description below. Everyone can download for freebies. The first group is going to do the configurations for the Mochi model, loading whichever models that you have, and then the clip text supporting which one you have. You have FP16 or FP8, whichever you prefer. And then of course we need the Mochi VAA decoding and the VAE encoding models for each of that. And you can download that available in the Mochi wrapper Comfy UI custom nodes. Then what are you going to do? Next step is going to the text to video sampling groups. In here, we have the schedule sampler and the decoder for the VAE, as well as the text positive and negative prompts. That is a very simple way to make everything work and generate the AI videos. And in here, I have written the note that the current updates of the Mochi One preview AI models. We need to use VAE tiling for more than one second videos in Comfy UI. Once we are not using that, that is going to be loading very heavy for the data from samplings to image. So we have to enable these options in order to run this. Second of all, we are going to use the unsampling that is passed from the first generated video. And I have used the get and set node to retrieve those image frames, pass that to the encoder doing one unsampler one time, and then pass to resampling to add more steps, doing more refinement on each image frame then that's why we have solid color on every object. And, and then we have kind of better quality than the first generation samples here. As I have always seen that the first sampling in Mochi 1 are always, sometimes not always, but if you get a far shot or some fast motion movement, it will kind of look blurry on the side right here and some objects as well. So when we have a fast motion blur that we don't want to get blurry, we will use unsampling and resampling steps to refine that. So. For the Patreon members, you get the full workflow that I just developed and also tested right here. I have also added the image to video groups here. That allows you to choose an image and it will help you resize that. Once it resizes, it will pass to the image encoder, which is also included in the Mochi wrapper custom nodes package. It will pass to the Mochi sampler. Again, this is going to have logic handling on these groups, which you will use for text to video or image to video. It will help you to do a switch over for image and latent data as well. So for those options, I have also set on the control panel on the top where you can just select if you want to use image to video. But again, Mochi One Preview is not support image to video by the model weights yet. For current video to video or image to video method in Comfy UI, it is just using encoding and decoding for video frames manipulation. You just check this Boolean option, you set it to false, then of course you are using text to video. And if you want to use image to video again, you click that to true and then set the numbers of seconds. And that's very easy, directly self-explanatory things. Just increase the numbers on here. I would suggest you keep it under five seconds. Just know that that is how much these AI video models can handle at this moment. And the text prompts again, very easy. Natural language sentences or simple text are able to instruct what to do for the AI to generate your result. And then also in here, as you can see, this is one example that I did. Actually, this is from my previous generated image for Cloud Video X thumbnails for one of the YouTube videos. And then it is pretty well matched for what this workflow is doing image to video on the projector. And then I try to make that for these animations. But then it got some denoise and then encoding, decoding, and it started to change the projector display on here. 
but then the astronaut is doing pretty good. The hand tried to flicker like a lighter or try to smoke a cigar in here. I don't know what he's doing, but then the hands are pretty smooth on these motions and the fire is going pretty smooth as well. As you can see, it's not going to deformations on this, you know, the far cam in here, but then it will change the output result a little compared with what I have in the image, the input image. So as you can see right here, the input image first, I will resize the image. And right here, as you can see, it's different from what we have, with a little difference, not too much, just very little difference, because we are doing a denoise of about 0.6. Here in the segment scheduling, I set the denoise to 0.6. So it will be a little different between the original input image and also the text prompt is influencing what we have in the outcome because I am doing a prompting of a campfire with this astronaut and then watching movies on the projector. So therefore, the main objects are going to add in some campfire on the front. And then overall for this image, the structure of the image is going to replicate in the output videos. But then as we again set to 0.6 denoise, it will have a little bit of change compared with what we have for the reference image. But then I have tested that if you set it too low for the denoise, like 0.3 or 0.2, it won't animate the image to some movement or actions there. So I suggest the sweet spot, set it to 0.5 or above. That will allow the image in this sampler group to animate the image as video. That is going to have some motions and movement. So yeah, pretty simple self-explanatory for input. And I will be adding more description in the Patreon post for the Patreon supporters about how to operate this workflow as well. And some tips of using the Mochi One in Comfy UI. And there's more results showing about this Mochi One AI generated videos. Some is good, some is not. And mostly I will be doing side by side comparison of the first sampling and the resampling generated result. And you will see that they look way different. Some of the results are going to improve. So yep, that is it for this video and I will see you on the next one. Have a nice day. See ya.